Hello everyone, this is Mumbo, and welcome back to another Minecraft video, and in this one we're going to take a look at the redstone. Now I often see people down in my comment section asking me, Mumbo, what circuits do I need to know to be able to build redstone contraptions like yours? Now sadly there is quite a bit of knowledge to redstone, you need to do quite a bit of practicing, but there are also a bunch of really useful circuits that is very helpful to know when you're building your own designs. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at 25 of my favourite redstone circuits, and hopefully you should find it fairly useful. So in today's video we're going to start things off with the very basics, and that is the redstone clock. Now redstone clock is a very simple circuit that gives an alternating redstone output. So we've got on, then it turns off, then it turns back on, then it turns back off, until of course you turn the whole redstone clock off. Now this design right here is probably one of the simplest ones, it just involves two hoppers, both running into one another, we've got a comparator taking the output, and we've got a lever to turn the whole thing off. So all we have to do to build it is chuck a hopper down like this, shift click a hopper onto that hopper, break this hopper and then place another hopper like that so they run back and forth, then we take a comparator output from that hopper, we place an item inside that hopper right there, and then we chuck down a lever to actually allow us to toggle the system. Really nice and easy. But what if you don't have any quartz for the comparator, or any iron for any of the hoppers? Or what if you want a slightly longer delay between the pulses? Well, you can design this thing right here. Now this is what's known as a redstone torch repeater clock, and as you can see, once again, we can toggle it on and off by powering this block. And unfortunately, you have to power that block, you can't power any of these, but as you can see, the redstone current runs round in a circle just by powering itself like that. Now to build this one, it is really very simple, we just need a block, a redstone torch right there, a repeater running in this direction, a repeater running in this direction, with redstone dust connecting both of them, and as you can see, that creates the redstone clock, and then we can turn it off using this lever. Now one thing I will say is, is you can increase the delay by adding more repeaters, and you can shorten the delay by reducing the number of ticks on these repeaters. That previous one was really quite slow, this one is really quite fast. This is the comparator clock, also known as the one tick clock, because there is one tick between powering the redstone and unpowering the redstone. So this is as fast as redstone clocks can get, and it's perfect for things like bone mill dispensers and arrow dispensers and that sort of stuff. Now the only thing I will say is if we take a redstone output directly from this thing, it will actually be constantly powered, you actually have to run the redstone out just a little bit further, and then you can chuck down your repeater, and as you can see, this thing is seriously, seriously quick. All you have to do to build it is place a block down like this, then chuck down a comparator right there, run the redstone out like that, and then power it, and as you can see, the whole thing will turn on, then if we chuck this thing in subtract mode, then we get ourselves the redstone clock. From insanely fast to insanely slow, this right here is the Etho Hopper Timer, and it allows us to have massive delays between redstone outputs. Now, the way that it works is we've got items inside both of these hoppers right here. Right now, all of the items are traveling from this hopper into this hopper, but then when all of the items have traveled from this hopper into this hopper, the redstone block will then switch over powering this hopper, meaning the items travel from this hopper into this hopper right here. And we take our redstone output from where this redstone block is. You don't need to fully understand how it works, you just need to understand how to build it. So all we have to do is chuck two hoppers running into one another just like this, then run a comparator out from both of those, a block on either end, redstone just like this, a sticky piston facing in both directions there with a redstone block on its face, then you can chuck a bunch of items inside these hoppers, and the more items you add, the longer the delay between the redstone outputs. Moving on from the redstone clock, we have got ourselves the monostable circuit. Now I often see people asking me down in the comment section, what does a monostable circuit do? Well, it's actually a very simple little thing. It creates a shorter redstone output. So as you can see, when we hit this button right here, we get a very quick flash through the repeater, and that's because this right here is a one tick monostable circuit. So we hit the button, and you can see it just flashes on extremely briefly. So what we have to do is chuck down a block, a button, redstone, a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on top, and then a repeater output, and that is that thing created. Extremely simple. But of course there is more than one way to create a monostable circuit. This right here is the dropper hopper monostable, and it's an extremely simple one, but it doesn't give a one tick redstone output, which does often come in handy, and we'll be getting onto that in the next couple seconds. So what we have to do is hit this button right here, and you can see the item travels up from the dropper, goes into the hopper, giving us a comparator output, and then it drops back down into the dropper. It's really quite easy. So all we have to do is hit a button, we need to place down a dropper, a hopper, and then your block, your comparator, and place any old item inside that dropper right there, and that's everything done. Now I know you guys like your silent redstone circuits, and you also like your one tick pulses, so this is a silent one tick pulse generator. All you have to do is hit this button right here, and you can see we get a very quick flash through the repeaters, and this actually uses the repeater locking mechanism to work, which is really quite interesting. So all we have to do for this one is chuck down a redstone torch, some redstone, repeaters running out like this, redstone dust right there, and a repeater running across like that. That should lock because this repeater is powering the side of that repeater. Then we can just run a redstone input into this block right here. We've got ourselves a rising edge monostable. Now, if you want it to be a falling edge monostable circuit, you just take out this redstone torch, chuck down some redstone, and you've got yourself the falling edge. 
The logical progression from monostable circuits is the T flip flop because a lot of monostable circuits are used to create T flip flops because sticky pistons will spit out their blocks when confronted with a one tick pulse. So for example, we've got a one tick monostable circuit right here, you should recognize this from a little bit earlier on, and that runs into this sticky piston, which is going to fire out its block and power that redstone right there. And when we hit this button once again, the block will be retracted. Now, if you're wondering what a T flip flop actually does, it's known as a toggleable flip flop, and it gives a toggleable redstone output. So when we hit this button, the redstone output toggles on. When we hit the button again, redstone output toggles off. Now, the way that we build it is, of course, block, button, we run a redstone input into this sticky piston with a block on top, a repeater set to one tick. It has to be set to one tick because this has to be a one tick redstone output. Then we need a sticky piston running out like this, a block right there, a redstone torch right there, and then some redstone dust or whatever you want to run the output into. A slightly more compact and silent design of the T flip flop is this dropper hopper T flip flop right here. We hit the button, redstone output turns off, we hit the button once again, and the redstone output turns on. Now, the way that this one works is we've got an item inside this little circuit right here, and we've got a dropper running across like this, a dropper running upwards, a dropper running across like that into this hopper right here, and that creates a little circuit of the items that toggles whenever we hit the button. So when we hit the button, it travels into this dropper. When we hit this button, it travels up into that hopper right there, then drops back down into that dropper. So to build it, of course, all we have to do is place a dropper like this, a dropper running across like that, a dropper running across like this, a hopper running down into that dropper right there, take a comparator output from this dropper right here, and then run an input directly into this dropper, and you've got yourself the circuit. Now you just have to run the item into the dropper, and that's everything done. As I'm sure you've worked out, I like to have a nice variety of different designs for each of my redstone circuits. So this right here is the repeater lock T flip flop. When we hit this button, we get ourselves a redstone output, and when we hit the button once again, the redstone output turns off. I'm sure you already knew that. But anyway, to build it, all we have to do is chuck down a block, redstone torch, a repeater running into a repeater like that, set to four ticks, a repeater like that, set to four ticks, redstone dust right here, a block, a redstone torch, and then we run an input into this block right here. And as always, hit the button, everything turns off, hit the button again, everything turns back on. T flip flops are awesome. So we've covered redstone contraptions that create really short outputs. We've covered redstone contraptions that create constant outputs. Now it's time to cover redstone contraptions that create really long outputs. Pulse extenders. When we hit this button right here, you can see that the pulse is noticeably extended by these comparators gradually depowering. You can actually extend the length of this pulse using more comparators, which is pretty awesome. But anyway, all we have to do is chuck a block down like this, a button down right there, a comparator running out like this, a comparator running back into the block, redstone dust right there, redstone dust right there, and you've got yourself a working pulse extender. And of course, all you have to do to power it is run redstone inputs into this block. This right here is what I'd describe as an old school pulse extender. This is what I used to use way back in the day before we had all these fancy comparisons and bits. So we've got a block, then a repeater, then a block with redstone connecting both of them. This block powers the redstone immediately, then four ticks later, this block powers the redstone, meaning that we get a pulse extender of four ticks longer. And you can actually increase the length of the pulse by just adding a few more repeaters like this, and then a block like that, and extending out the redstone. Now this pulse will be eight ticks longer. So the way that we build it is, of course, block like this, a repeater set to four ticks, a block right there, and then redstone between them, and then you run an input into that block. This designer actually uses a similar concept. It's known as an abrogate. When we hit the button, this repeater powers this block, then these repeaters gradually power their way around and power the block as well, meaning that we increase the length of the pulse by 10 ticks. So to build it, all we have to do is grab a three by three area, place blocks in all of the corners, a repeater running across like this, a repeater set to four ticks, a repeater set to four ticks, and then a repeater set to two ticks, depending on the length of your inputs, because otherwise you just get two redstone pulses as opposed to one long one. Then you want a redstone output right there and a button right here, and that is everything completed. But what if we want to extend our pulse massively? Well, you're gonna to have to build something that looks a little bit like this. Now at first glance, this may look like a hopper timer, but it's slightly different. It's actually designed by Code Crafted, and it works wonderfully. When we hit this button, the redstone block will move across, we'll get ourselves a comparator output, which means that we can take that out as the pulse extender output, and then the redstone block will be pushed back across, we still have an output, until eventually all of the items move from this hopper back into this hopper, and then the entire thing will switch off. And of course, you can increase the length of the pulse by adding more items into the hopper. So all we have to do for this one is chuck a block down like this, redstone dust on top of that one, a comparator running across like that, a sticky piston facing in this direction, your two hoppers down at the bottom right there, then you want a comparator, a block, your redstone, your regular piston right there, and then a redstone block in between them, and then you can chuck your items inside these hoppers right here. Moving on from all that, we have got logic gates. Now logic gates are incredibly important because redstone is a boolean logic based system, and logic gates are basically the pillars of a boolean logic based system. So this right here is an AND gate. Now what this means is, is that both this 
and this have to be on for output to be on. So as you can see, we turn this on, nothing happens. We turn this on, something happens. We turn this off, nothing happens. So both of them have to be on to give ourselves an output. So to build this, all we have to do is place three blocks in like this, redstone torches on both of those, redstone right there, levers running into both of these blocks, or of course, they can be any form of redstone input, and then we want to run a redstone torch running out the back like that, and that is going to invert this redstone current, and we've got ourselves a working AND gate. Going to be honest, the OR gate is considerably simpler. I mean, you, you've seen it right here. It's not exactly the most complex redstone contraption in the world, but it's a very good concept to know. This all this can be on for our output to be on. So it doesn't matter which one's on, both of them can be on at the same time. As long as one of them is on, then we've got ourselves a redstone output. And of course, this can apply to more than one input. You can have hundreds of inputs running into this thing. Just as long as one of them is on, then you get yourself an output. And the way that we build it is extraordinarily simple. Blocks running across like this, redstone running out like that, and then inputs running into any of these blocks. Of course, there are multiple designs for all of the different logic gates. I'm not going to be showing off too many of them, but I just thought I'd showcase this quick vertical AND gates. So we've got one input down here and one input up at the top here. We flick this lever, nothing happens. We flick this lever, we get ourselves an output. But if we turn off this lever, we don't get ourselves an output. So this is a functional AND gate. It's just a tiny bit more complicated using levers, repeaters, and pistons and things. So to build it, all you have to do is chuck in both blocks like this. You're going to need levers on both of those blocks or whatever redstone inputs are going to be going into them. You want redstone dust right there, a block, a repeater, running across into that sticky piston that is going to be facing downwards, and then we're going to have our block on its face, and then our redstone output, which is going to be this repeater right here. RS and all latches are relatively strange little circuits for the early days of my redstone learning. Didn't fully understand what they did or how they worked, but gradually over the years I picked things up, and eventually I found uses for them, and I'll be covering those in the next couple seconds. But essentially, they work a little bit like T flip-flops, they just give a different output depending on which input is activated. So when we hit this button right here, nothing will happen. But when we hit this button, it will toggle the output. Then when we hit the button again, nothing will happen until we hit this button, then the redstone output will toggle. That's essentially how it works. Now this is useful for things like button selector panels and doors that you only want to be able to open from one side, just stuff like that. So to build it, all we have to do is place a block like this, a redstone torch on the side of that block with redstone running across like this, then a block right here, redstone torch, and then redstone right there with buttons on top of both of those or your inputs running into those blocks. And as you can see, we've got ourselves a working RS knowledge. And of course, just like every other redstone circuit, this was made considerably easier with the introduction of droppers and comparators. So when we hit this button right here, you can see our redstone output toggles off. When we hit the button again, nothing happens. When we hit this button, redstone output toggles on. When we hit it again, absolutely nothing happens. Typical RS null latch behavior. Now this works both vertically and also horizontally, and it works by facing two droppers into one another, then placing an item between them. So the way that we build it is you chuck a block down like this, a dropper facing upwards right there, a block up like that, dropper facing downwards, then run an input into this block, an input into this block, then take a comparator output from either one of your droppers. That is everything completed. All you have to do is chuck an item into the droppers, and you're good to go. Double piston extenders. Double piston extenders are extremely useful and also really quite awesome. It's always fun trying to work out how to build your own double piston extender because they're actually a tiny bit complicated. You have to extend the back sticky piston, then the front sticky piston, then retract the front sticky piston, then the back one, then re-extend the front sticky piston, then retract the front sticky piston to pull back the block. I mean, there's plenty of things going on there and this circuit does it absolutely perfectly and it's one of the oldest tricks in the book. The two, the four, and then the zero. That's basically how it works. So you want to place a repeater, two ticks, repeater set to four ticks, connect all of the redstone, then go sticky piston here, sticky piston here, and then a block on its face, and run an input into that thing, and it will work all day long. One of the oldest redstone circuits that I remember. But what if you want something that's completely flush with the wall? Well, then you're going to have to build something a little bit like this one. We hit this button, all of our piston extend, then all of the blocks retract, meaning it's completely flush back with this line right here. Now, if you look at the actual timing circuit, you'll notice that it's exactly the same as the previous design, it's just laid out slightly differently. So first things first, you want to build your little wall like this. You want redstone right there, a repeater set to two ticks, a block out the back, redstone, block, a repeater set to two ticks, running into this block right here, and then you're going to want to chuck in both of your sticky pistons running across like that, with the block on its face, run your input into this block or into this redstone right here, and then you've got yourself a working circuit. Things are getting a tiny bit complicated over here, but what if you want to build a vertical double piston extender that is also completely flush with the floor? Well, you're going to have to design something that looks a little bit like this one. We flick the lever, all of our pistons extend, flick the lever again, all of our pistons retract, 
pulling the block down to the floor surface. It's going to involve pulse extenders and also falling edge monostable circuits, so we're really going to have to sink our teeth into this one. When I place a block like this, a lever running into that block, that's going to be your input. You want to have two redstone like that, a repeater set to four ticks, and a repeater just on the default, and a block right here, a sticky piston, a sticky piston, and then a block on top. That's going to be your double extender. Then you want to place a redstone torch right here, a block, and then another redstone torch. And as you can see, these will extend, so you're going to have to remove those and replace them. And then you want to place a block just like that. Then not running out from that redstone torch, you want to run a repeater into a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on top. You should recognize this monostable circuit. Then you want to replace a repeater set to three ticks, running into this block right here, redstone dust on top, and then a block right there, which is going to do the final block retraction. And then if we flick the lever, everything extends, flick the lever again, everything retracts. Awesome. So we covered the upwards facing vertical double piston extender that was flush with the floor. Why don't we cover the vertical downwards facing double piston extender that is flush with the ceiling. When we flick this lever, double piston extends. When we flick the lever again, all of the blocks retract. Now this one is a tiny bit simpler, but it involves roughly the same mechanics. All we have to do is go a block up like this, place three blocks going across like this, redstone dust right there, redstone dust right there, a repeater set to two ticks with redstone dust running into this block right here. Then you want to place a sticky piston and then another sticky piston. That is going to be your double piston extender. And now it is time to create your falling edge monostable circuit that is going to retract the final block. Can you do that by placing a redstone torch, a dropper like this, a hopper running back into that dropper. So that uses the other kind of monostable circuit that we showcased earlier on. Chuck any old item inside that dropper, a comparator running into this block right here. And that is everything finished. Just a lever on that block. And there we go. We got ourselves a working circuit. And finally, onto the bud switch. Also known as the block update detector, it essentially does what it says on the tin. It detects block updates. Things like blocks being placed, things growing, water traveling, that sort of stuff. So if we place a block down here, you can see our piston extends. And we got ourselves a very fast redstone output through that repeater that I'm really struggling to show on the screen, but I can promise you it is actually happening. All we have to do to build this one is chuck down a sticky piston, a slime block, then you want a redstone block on top of that slime block, and a movable object next to that redstone block with a repeater running out of that one. And that's everything completed. If we just chuck down a block right here, we can detect block updates very nice and easily. Now the first design is all well and good. I mean, it's incredibly simple, but what if you want a block update detector that is completely flush with the wall? You're going to have to build something that looks a little bit like this. It involves a tiny bit more redstone circuitry, but when we place down the block, redstone output. When we remove the block, redstone output. Very nice and simple. All you have to do is chuck a sticky piston down like this with a redstone block on its face. Then we run a repeater out of that one, a block up like this with a redstone torch right there, then some redstone dust next to that redstone torch, a block right here, a block right there, and then a repeater set to two ticks running into that block. And as you can see, this thing works like a charm. So there we have it, ladies and gents. That rounds up today's video on 25 redstone circuits you should know. I hope that you found it useful. It's been a very long video, so I apologize if you found it a tiny bit boring. But unfortunately, ladies and gents, that is all I've got time for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.